for anybody that wants to get started in creating content right now we're just totally freestyling because we understand that people the audience needs this raw uncut because nobody wants to get on camera everybody is scared to to get on camera and mess up but you was like yo let's just get this thing done man let's get on here what's going on everybody we got my man izzy from the blueprint barber lounge and izzy why don't you tell the audience who you are and what you do i like to call myself a haircut tech that's why we always have different blueprints blueprint barber lounge my name is izzy i run a standalone barber vip uninterrupted vip I want to go behind so that nobody comes in during the cut. And you have the shop to yourself and have an amazing hair experience. So I leverage the negative situation, the pandemic, COVID, all that stuff, and I leverage it to my advantage and it's a positive situation. For any entrepreneurs out there trying to figure it out, what advice do you give them? Stay consistent. Consistency. I know it's just so cliche. But yo, yeah, it's real. The more you do it, the more probability you have to get seen. That's what I say. And every time you feel that you're taking hell, just remember you're taking a lesson from what it is. It's not a painful loss. Because that's time invested, and you're going to learn from that. And then you just and you keep going. And then you just, what's working, what's not working. And that works with any industry. I feel like people stop their own growth without even knowing it. And sometimes that confidence has to be extracted from an outside source because sometimes people just don't know how to do it. Obviously, you network or show your value in front of whoever. Stay connected. Don't ever over deliver. Just be real to what it is that you're on. So if you could leave them with one thing is something like inspiring, motivating, encouraging for them to be all they can be. I would say that don't ever give up on yourself. And our life is about going through seasons. And you just got to be able to weather the storm when they come, whether it's snow, sleet, hail, hurricane. You just gotta be able to get through these seasons and all those storms that life brings you and stay consistent in your work. What's going on, everybody? Listen, we are back at it again. Again. Your network is your net worth. We got my man Izzy from the Blueprint Barber Lounge. Izzy, why don't you tell the audience who you are and what you do, and let's get into this cut, baby. Let's go. My name is Izzy. I like to call myself a haircut tech. We always have different blueprints. I run a standalone barber lounge VIP experience, an uninterrupted VIP experience where I lock the door behind so that nobody comes in during your cut and you can have the shop to yourself and have an amazing hair grooming experience. I also do scalp micropigmentation, but aside from all that, today we're going to focus on the haircut. So basically, I'm just a VIP concierge barber in a nutshell. Yeah. He's one of the best barbers in Philly. He's getting me right before I go overseas to Dominican Republic. And he is the preferred partner of Philadelphia Real Producers. He is the in-house barber, and we are making it happen today. Listen, this is the network season three, baby. Your network is your net worth. Let's and go. get used to Izzy because <laughs> we getting busy. Let's go, baby. Let's go. <laughs> but I was just asking you a little bit about how you got introduced to the real producers movement. Basically in, in the beginning, I really didn't see a lane for myself because I wasn't a realtor. I met Josh through working for a mortgage company, but I basically was a marketing person for the mortgage company. So I had nothing really to do mm. with mortgages, but I saw an opportunity once I met Josh and he mentioned to me that he was going to start some networking events and it was going to be real estate involved. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm sure I can get a lot of clients from your networking events because realtors always want to look good. Bougie ass realtors. They just, <laughs> they're bougie. I'm just going to keep it like that. Listen. And they're going to pay for a good haircut. 
So I said, I got to get involved with that. And I said, how am I going to get into this magazine? How can I incorporate myself into a real estate magazine? So I said, Josh, I have an idea. How about we make me the person that is in charge of making these people look good for the magazine? I said, that, that could be my end. You can make me a preferred partner, making everybody look good. And with that, they got like a nice uh, headshot and a really nice haircut. And that was my lane. And that's how I got into Real Producers Magazine. People on the network, they already know who Josh is, Wolf of Broad Street. We did a six-week series on visibility plus credibility equals profitability. So today, Izzy, there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about networking as professionals, business owners, and personal branding. I really, I've always admired how you're building your personal brand on social media, the value that you bring others. So yeah, man, let's get into this. I appreciate you, man. This was a last minute request. I know you don't really do this for anybody. So I'm extremely grateful. I'm actually getting a, on this Friday, I'm going overseas to see my pop in Dominican Republic. I know you just came back from vacation. How was your vacation, bro? To be quite honest with you, I was a little sour because, I don't know, as you guys know, the uh, hurricane that just went by, Hurricane Lee, interrupted our course. And we were supposed to go to St. Kitt and Thomas and a few other places. And we wound up having to go back to Mexico for the fourth time. I'm nothing against Mexico. Beautiful place, but I was looking forward to seeing other places. Once again, another cruise heading to Mexico. But we got to swim with the dolphins with my daughter and my wife. That was nice. So it was a good time, all in all. There was a fight on a boat. You also see that on YouTube. Uh, <laughs> but for the most part, it was a positive experience. And uh, I recommend cruise for those that say they're scared of them. Get over your fear. Cruise is worth it. Live life. And, that, and that's a perfect segue, man. I feel like a, people are not only have fear for cruises, but people, they're afraid to start building their personal brand on social media. What are some tips that you would give the audience, like how to get started with building your personal brand? Like, where did the blueprint Barber Lounge come from? Josh said it before on an episode, like we all have a personal brand deep within us. How long have you been cutting hair, bro? And like, where did the, the name Blueprint come from? I started experimenting with clippers when I was about 14 years old. And I really got tired of getting shitty haircuts. Excuse my French. But the haircuts that I was getting me for were so bad. So bad that even the clippers would cut me and I'd go home with all these cuts all over my head. It was just, it was horrible. So I told my dad at an early age of 13, I was like, hey, listen, if somebody's going to mess up my haircut, it's going to be me for full. Started giving myself my own haircut. And for sure, I messed up my haircut plenty of times, cut myself plenty of times, but it felt better when I did it and didn't have to pay nobody to mess me up. So I gathered my money, bought some clippers from like Kmart. For those of you that I just totally aged myself. <laughs> but yeah, this, I bought my first clipper set at a Kmart. They were only like $20. They were like some Remington horrible clippers. Anyway, and I think that's what kind of helped me polish my skill is I was dealing with the worst tools and now that I have the best tools, like I can give a quality product now. So I continued my journey with cutting hair. And when I got the confidence to start cutting other people's hair, I reached out to my cousin, jacked his hair up. It's different from cutting your own hair. Yo. It was bad. He asked for a blowout. I gave him like a bow cut or something. It was bad. Yo. And uh, yeah, he was my guinea pig for a while. Mastered his hair, which I feel bad now because I think I jinxed his hair or put like some type of voodoo on his hair from all my bad hair because he's bald now. He is bald. Oh, man. But I saved him with the SMPs. I looked out later on in life. But uh, yeah, and then I started cutting the kids' hair from the block and I advanced and got better and better. The kids from school until I was able to monetize it. I got confident enough to start asking money for these haircuts. I was cutting hair out of the basement of my mom's house. 
And at that time, making $15, $20 for a haircut as a 16-year-old out of your basement was like good money for somebody that was in high school. And that was like the, the going rate for haircuts back in the day where it was like $15, $20 in an actual barbershop. And I was amateur making that in my basement. So that kind of motivated me. And, and I was like, wow, I could really monetize this. But as I got older, I felt like I, don't, I didn't know if that was going to be my route in life. And I was like, am I really going to be able to monetize this to the point to live a lifestyle that I really want? Not just, I didn't want to be an average Joe. So I said, I got to do something more. So I said, let me try corporate America. I've done marketing. I've done cell phone sales, retail. I've done construction. I got a really gnarly. I had a table. Oh, almost lost my hand. I've been concrete cutting. Yeah. And I. Let me see that scar. Hold up. That drunk crib. Whoa. Man. Jeez Louise. Yeah. Yeah, this is bad. <laughs> and uh, I said, yo, man, let me just go back to doing what I know how to do and figure out how to monetize this in a way where it's going to set me up for the type of lifestyle that I want. And the pandemic came and everybody wanted a private experience. Nobody wanted to be around, around anyone. Nobody. Everybody wanted to social distance. That was like the word. Social distance, five feet away, three feet away, whatever. And I said, well, that comes with a price. If you want to be in a shop by yourself and you want a private experience, then I'm really going to have to charge a premium for that. And nobody cared. Everybody was getting those PUA checks. Oh, man. So, oh, oh, my God. Everybody had a fresh shake and a fresh pair of J's. Who did? Wow. It was crazy. So I leveraged that. So I leveraged the negative situation, the pandemic, COVID, all that going on. And I leveraged it to my advantage and made it a positive situation. So I said, look, $100 a haircut. Let's go. You guys want a private experience? You want to be socially distanced, but you still want to feel like life is normal? I can give you that experience at Blueprint Barber Lounge. And the way Blueprint, the name came about, I was doing a consultation over the phone for somebody that, that wanted a house call. But their mother always used to take them for their haircuts and they she was the one that would tell the barber how to cut that person's hair and he didn't know how to ask for the type of haircut he wanted which i was a little embarrassed for him myself while i was on the phone speaking to him but i leveled <laughs> with him yeah i was like damn you don't know how to say i want a number one on top with a skin fade yo the consultation went like this what kind of haircut do you want bro i really don't know my mom always used to tell the barber what kind of haircut i got I said, all right, you know what? Don't worry about it. I'm going to create a blueprint that is perfect for you. And we're going to just create a hairstyle that works for you. We'll figure it out together. And my wife on the side, Alexa, can you stop? What are you doing? Excuse me, Alexa LaRue. She was interrupting my Alexa. Yeah, what's going on with her? Chill, Alexa. Oh, <laughs> um, man. Yeah, so blueprint came about that way. And I... she's still talking. Alexa? Alexa. Calm down. Stop. So my wife was... Like ear hustling a little bit on the side while I was on the phone with the client and doing the consultation. And she's like, oh, wow, that's a great name for a barbershop blueprint. I was like, really? Yes. She was blueprint barbershop. I was like, no, blueprint barber lounge. Because mm. I want it to be more of an experience, like a VIP experience. And I want everybody to feel like they're able to sit here and relax, even though we're going through a pandemic. And that's how blueprint was born. Yeah, man. Crazy, right? Like I, I seen you and it's crazy because. The one thing that I've learned, especially about marketing and, and business, like when they say you got to stay in front of people, you got to stay in front of your target audience. You got to make yourself visible. The whole 60 series ability, profitability. Mm -hmm. But this is my first time in your shop and, and I'm so grateful. I appreciate the opportunity, but I seen you way like you were in my face. <laughs> And now it makes sense because you were in marketing, so you understand marketing strategies. But yeah, how did, I already asked you, how'd you get in like with real producers, right? But where was it in like within the process that you, what am I trying to say? Like, how did you know I needed to see you like a million times before cutting my hair. First of all, picking a barber or trusting someone to cut your hair is just 
a process in its own. I know people that had barbers for years and been getting haircuts from them since they were like kids. And it's hard to trust another person with your hair. So it's your image. This, this is basically our makeup for men. It's our hair. To trust somebody to alter your image, it's, it's definitely something that takes time for someone to get comfortable with. Maybe you had your barber already and you were like, you were cool with him, but you didn't know that move point. Could... No, I'm not going to remember. <laughs> hey, hey, sometimes it just takes time. Sometimes it just takes time. For anybody that wants to get started in creating content, right? This is totally, right now, we're just totally freestyling because we understand that people, the audience, needs this raw, uncut, because nobody wants to get on camera. Everybody is scared to to get on camera and mess up, but you was like, yo, let's just get this thing done, man. Let's get on here. I think vulnerability, I think vulnerability sells. Like, seeing people mess up That's on enough. camera. There's a whole segment for on YouTube for just bloopers. People just like to see people fail and mess up for some reason. I don't understand. I understand it because it's not something that it's unscripted. It's real. And most of social media is kind of fake, fake, to be honest bro. with you. What? So when so you're seeing all this fake stuff on social media, when you finally see something real, your eyes and your mind kind of gravitate to that because it's something that you don't see all the time. And you're like, Yo, this bro just lit over his word during that video and it wasn't edited. Like, why didn't they edit that? And they, they continue watching. Yo, I'm hoping that I mess up a few more times so that you guys continue watching. Nah, man. And like, <laughs> I appreciate your willingness. And this is how I built my career is just off of, like you're saying, providing an experience. And I think that's something a lot of entrepreneurs need to come to realize is that if you're not pro providing an experience to your client, then you're not really doing anything because your competition is. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And by far, you have the most, I would say this is the best barbershop I've ever been in as far as like the exclusivity making. Dude, you locked the door when we started cutting. I'm like, oh, nobody's, nobody's getting in. Nobody's this is, getting this in. This is all for me. That's not that I just want, I don't want that in that video. Now that's the Ben. And that's what I've been more times during this video saying her name didn't interrupt us again. But yeah, that is the screen we did. We locked the door behind us. It's a tenant door. So nobody can really see in. I got the blinds closed. If you got some type of step, never do that if it's something, you know, nobody to know you're in there. I can make sure that nobody you knows. We're in here. You be able to see the privacy that you want. We're in here. Absolutely, bro. But I think that. Not telling people give this experience. I think more barbers should because then they can literally monetize those extra little added amenities onto the price tag. I think a lot of barbers are missing out on this wave of one on one <laughs> experience. And honestly, I like to be a one man band because I don't think. I want to manage multiple barbers and I just like to keep the energy and the vibe in here controlled. And if my vibe is altered, then whatever it is that's altering my vibe, I got to discard it. Me being in here by myself, I even ch pick and choose my clients. If there's somebody that I don't want to cut anymore, I'll let them know. I don't think that you're the client for me and I don't think I'm the barber for you. The last few experiences we had together wasn't very pleasant. Uh, from this day forward, you're going to have to find another barber. Cut and dry, just like that. Dang. Yeah, man. So I got to the point where now I'm picking and choosing who I want to service because my energy and my vibe and my mental state is more important than money at this point in my game. Dang, bro. There's this one saying that I have, I, I try to live by it, but it's your vibe attracts your tribe. Ooh. And, and I feel like a lot of people don't understand that like the law of attraction, the secret, right? You have the ability, I think we talked about this earlier, creating the life that you've always wanted, right? Mm -hmm. 
And I think a part of that is working with the people that you've always wanted, right? Having that target and that specific type of client that you want to work with. So I think that's dope, bro, <laughs> that, that you cut people off. <laughs> I cut people's hair and I cut them off if I don't like them. So <laughs> nah, but it's true, bro. It's, you got to protect your energy. You yeah, know what I'm absolutely. saying? Because there's people that they drain your energy or... They oh. can help you redirect your energy. I call them energy vampires. Yo, facts. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, man. It's, you gotta protect your, your vibe, man. Because, yeah, that can alter your whole day. That can alter the way you're going to treat your next client if you're not disciplined enough to switch back to the vibe you had prior to that client that altered your vibe. It can ruin your marriage. Yeah. This place, I literally take. 10 to 15 minutes to sit on my chair and just reset my mind before I go home because I have to become, get into husband and dad mode. Finding the balance, right? I would really love to do a series about men's mental health, businessmen, entrepreneurs, all that stuff. Because a lot of people, there's a lot of stuff, for content about women, and I want to speak more about, to shed more light on, on the men. No, nah, bro. Honestly, that's one of the things that I think there needs to be more men's groups. But who just need to get hurt? Because I think right now the times we're living in, like men lack leaders. There's not a lot of leadership out here. Mm -hmm. So, like for you, you have a heart to to influence businessmen, right? Like those that are already husbands, fathers, and that's dope, bro. Because we need more of that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, that's not easy running a business and supporting a family. I have the luxury that my wife is also a business person as well. And she has, she's a beast, man. She has a very powerful mind. And honestly, I would say she's 10x me. She is a mobile in her industry. And do. Where we have a school? It's a preschool? Oh, wow. Yeah. You have a preschool? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, we gotta, we, we, we can't be right in bed, but it's, you know, we we'll hold up to 34 children, my wife, owner, director, and she manages that very person, people, I do a little bit of behind the scenes on the computer and stuff like that, I don't, I'm not in there teaching, which I did sub one time, and I did a Spanish class and a music class, but <laughs> it's crazy. You, you know how to read music? I don't know how to read music, but I can play music by ear. Really? Yes. So I'm can you play drum. the keys? I can play a little bit of the keys. Yep. But I'm mainly a Latin percussionist, so I'm more into percussion. I literally, a couple months ago, I love the keyboard. I listen in the back. While I'm working, I'll listen to background piano music. Oh, nice. To the point, I was like, man, let me buy one of these, man, and see what I can do. And I literally taught myself how to read music. I can't say I can play it all the way. I definitely know the keys. I know how to read chords. Oh, nice. All self-taught. So wow. that's dope, bro. That's not easy to do because I've been playing drums and playing a little bit of a piano and stuff like that. I remember. That's all a sheet of paper. I'm not, I'm not understanding anything. The G club stuff. Well, well, I don't know. I just, I don't know any of that stuff. So what would you, what would you say about mindset, bro? What's your take on mindset, <laughs> especially in business? I'm very, I'm a big, depend by different mm, definite success. For me, maybe my version of success or by definition would be that I want to live in a forever home that's in a community with HOA and a nice big pool and friendly neighbors with the same values that we hold and being around other successful people so that my daughter can already be in alignment with those people as she gets older. I basically just want her to be successful herself. So for me, like my success is that being around other successful people and 
getting my dream home and feeling somewhat financial free. Um, but some other people may feel that their definition of success is just being in the one bedroom apartment, no car because they like to take the bus. They love to live in a city and take in the fresh air and get their coffees in the morning and live by themselves. I, I heard this saying before that success is when other people, oh, how does it go? Success is when other people say you've changed. Mm -hmm. Is that what it is? Success is, oh man, I'm gonna have to look up that quote. But yeah, success is when other people say you're not the same. Yeah. I know for me, coming from the background I come from, yeah, we can have like a number in mind. We can have like financial goals, but I really feel like success lies in developing a new mindset, developing a new hunger for more, developing, like for instance, you said about your wife, that's dope. My wife is crazy because last year around this time, we was like at war, man, like going through one of the toughest seasons in our marriage. We're going on seven years being, no, we're going on eight years being married. I hope she's not oh, watching wow. right now. I'm saying, <laughs> but, but, and like they say seven is the number of completion, oh. like in numerology or whatever, mm -hmm. but the seventh year is when we got our breakthrough. And now my wife, she's one of my real estate recruits. You know what I'm oh. saying? She, two months, it's been a month and a half since she got licensed, but she already has her first deal on her contract. Oh, wow. Congratulations. She started collaborating with me and real producers for these events, these networking events, because mm -hmm. you already know, baby, your network is your network. Yes, so, yeah. I feel like su success is in transformation. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. Success is within the transformation. For sure. I was talking to my wife the other day, and we were mentioning that uh, definitely get that nice exposure from it. And she's actually a, a real producer. Yeah. Of, yeah. She's in a magazine as well, New Achievers Academy. Oh, yeah? I got her. Um, he got her in and it was just like a whole ripple effect that it's just awesome how you can just leverage different tools to get a maximum exposure. It definitely helps out to extend your network. And <laughs> just don't join any network. Well, you gotta be that you know what brings value to you. Because you don't wanna waste your time you know, I mean, that, well, you. that don't align that don't align because you gotta also you also have to know where you stand if you're in a, in a room filled with people that are doing less than you then those people aren't going to be able to do it they're not going to be able to benefit you or help you level up you got to be around people that are doing more than you and have more success than you so that way you can feed off of that energy i feel here at the network, we subscribe to the philosophy that one of the fastest ways to wealth is through building a powerful network. Because success sometimes can be secretive. And if you don't have a network of people that have already done it, of people that already have a blueprint, then it's going to take you a little bit longer to get there. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's why you got to surround yourself around people that already have those gems because there's a lot of gatekeepers out there. There's a lot of people that have all this information and don't want to share. They'll send you to Google or chat GPT and say, figure it out yourself. I bet maybe they're afraid that you're going to surpass them or take their spot. I don't know, but they right. always say information is free. Just give it away. That, that blessing is going to come back tenfold. So. I was talking to somebody last night at the networking event. It was Josh G. He has over 100,000 followers on Instagram. Wow. And it's just crazy because it was like, for once, I finally was talking to somebody about social media that 
understands for what it, it can do, right? Like visibility plus credibility equals profitability. But sometimes becoming visible doesn't necessarily give you the credibility, right? Mm -hmm. But in other senses, right? Let's say you get intro, somebody, you get an intro and somebody's, okay, let me see what this guy's about. Right. That's when the credibility comes, when you have that trail of content. Right. When you have that catalog. Mm -hmm. And that's why I've been just trying to grind with this YouTube channel. You got over a thousand subscribers, but bro, I remember doing videos and there would be like three views. Mm -hmm. And it was a little discouraging. Mm -hmm. Practice makes perfect. You gotta do anything, and yeah. You gotta you gotta figure it out. Mm -hmm. So for any entrepreneurs out there trying to figure it out, what advice would you give them is? Stay consistent. Consistency. I know it's just so cliche. Consistency. But Yo, okay. yeah, it's real. The more you do it, the more probability you have to get seen. And when you do it once, then you only have one chance. You do it a thousand times, you got a thousand chances. You do it a million times, a million chances. So it's, you got to stay in people's faces. The world is a big place, the World Wide Web. You're not gonna, you're not gonna, for those that become viral off of one video, but they had to have been a million shares. Mm. It's, jeez, that was heavy. Yeah, it's consistency. So that's what I say. And every time you feel that you're taking an L, just remember you're taking a lesson mm. from what it is. It's not a, a loss because that's time invested and you're gonna learn from that. And then you just continue and you keep going. And then you just polish yourself as you go and see what's working, what's not working. And that works with any industry. And you know what? Like the one thing I appreciate about you and seriously, bro, just so you know, like I do, because in my process, man, there was a couple of times where I wasn't necessarily getting the return on investment as far as putting a lot of time in being consistent and still not necessarily seeing the results but sometimes it only takes one person and you have been that one person to me a lot of times where you're like bro man i see you your content keeps getting better yeah like you're putting out more value like it's getting more quality yep. and i just want to say i appreciate you for that because like that Man, dude, that carried me through some times. Oh, you know man. what I'm saying? I'm glad you told me that because I'll continue to support those that I see that are grinding. And I also need to be let known that I had an impact on you so that I can continue doing that for others. They did it for me too. I wasn't always the greatest barber. And people noticed that I was polishing my skills little by little and they were giving me recognition and that it was my driving force as well to continue because there was a couple of times that I was like, this is just not for me. How am I ever going to do a haircut Jeez, that's bro. worth a hundred dollars? I said, all right, fine. If I'm not the sharpest barber in the world, I'm going to give them the best customer service. So fine. My haircut's worth 20 bucks, but the experience you get is the other 80. So I'm going to get my hundo no matter what. And that's all right. <laughs> so man, there's a lot to unpack within that because like you were saying, even with what we're doing right now, this strategy that's being implemented, like we can't go wrong with it yeah. because yeah, it might be a little raw. It might be a little uncut, but the content strategy that I have in place is long form repurpose value. Mm -hmm. And already you dropped so many gems within this. Oh, and geez. oh man, I'm not going to lie, man. Like anytime a mic is hooked up to me, first of all, this is the first time a mic was hooked up to me but anytime i'm in front of a mic or a camera i get nervous so i'm not gonna lie and sit here and say i'm not nervous talking to this camera and i'm gonna stumble over my words and i may not make sense a few times that's cool because the next video is just gonna get better and, and better better and better that's it so let's go i'm ready i just needed to get that off my chest that'll make me have a little more confidence during this video. <laughs> nah man this is dope bro a beautiful shop, by the way. How long have you had this shop? It's 2019, so we're going. Wow, geez, are we already going on five? Wow, no way. 
Let me say 2020. I just, yeah, my 30th anniversary. Congrats, bro. Thank you, man. Congrats, Congrats bro. According to my When landlord. is the third year oh. anniversary? My bad. Oh, uh, it was August 2nd. Okay, so it already passed. Yeah, yeah it passed already. All and right, according to ups, my man. landlord, Big thank ups, you, bro. thank you. He said I was the longest standing business. So I hit the record for the longest standing business in this commercial space. Yes, that's an accomplishment, bro. I think so, but I, Dang, I thought it was bro. sad for the longest standing business three years. I can't imagine how long other businesses lasted if it was less than three years. Was, I was like, man, this yeah. had a little bit of a haunting on it or something, but people weren't making it past two years and I was able to break through the curse. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it, man. It's been a long journey, but it's been a fun one. It's been a fun journey. I've met a lot of people and a lot of things. Shake, shake the, a lot of hands and kiss a lot of babies. You know how they say? Shake hands and kiss, kiss babies. babies. Like, yep. like the president. Yep. And I've been to wedding, baptism, birthday, corporate events, all through people that just sat in the chair. I've gotten gigs doing marketing because I do that on the side sometimes too. Yeah, um, I wanted to hop into that too, right? Because like, that's, you're not only like an entrepreneur, social media influencer, but you're also a, a, a marketer as well. Yeah. How'd you get into marketing? I dabble in that a little bit. So I used to do marketing for a mortgage company in the past. So I feel like I got some of my experience there. got my feet wet there a little bit. And I found that I was doing pretty uh, pretty decent job anything that i did afterwards i incorporated my marketing skills and learned how to mess with social media and do content creation and people started noticing me so i just kept up with it and, and i was finally able to monetize that as well i have about 63k followers on social media right now my instagram account I'm not sure how i got there <laughs> but we got there and uh, dang bro jeez bro it's a, it's a lot right 63k yeah i was look i'm not gonna lie when i first started and i got that first thousand i, I was like wow i went viral <laughs> but i didn't know enough about social media so I, for me it was a big deal to be at a thousand on instagram and then i started like doing my homework and i'm seeing people at 100k 200k a million i'm like all right listen man i yeah, yeah. I feel like honestly, like even for me, is, and you understand this as a marketer, as a content creator, you spend so much time building other people's brands mm -hmm. that, man, you got to make sure you're putting in that work for yourself. Absolutely. Jeez, bro. It's a weird ball, man, because you get so lost in the mix. And getting them the exposure that some planning to kind of fall off on your own social media because it's taxing. It's, it's people don't know, but it's, it's a little mentally exhausting, especially if you're a one man bone and you don't have anybody creating content for you. So if you're doing everything yourself, you're taking the videos, you're editing, you're creating the captions, search engine optimization, like you're doing all those things yourself. Man, that's a lot. Hopefully one day I'll be at a point where I can, I don't know, get a team together or form a team. Maybe we could form a team and... It's, it's already in motion, baby. Right, it's already in oh, motion. Let's go. I'll lose my little pool here. Get this hair off the left side. There you go. Oh, man. My man. <laughs> Them a sneak peek of the Blueprint Barber Lounge, baby. <laughs> Oh, look at this. And that is where the magic happens. Nah. Well, on that couch, that'll give out. I'm too heavy for that. No, I'm kidding. Hey, man, we got a whole situation going on right here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The haircut's coming out pretty nice so far. Man, dude, it's... Nah, but seriously, bro, thank you so much, man. I know I don't even know what to expect, man. I'm about to go on this. And I feel like it's for something real deep and personal, man, but... As fathers, we was talking about this, man. As fathers and men, 
we need to be connected with our roots. We need to have a better understanding of our culture, of our family history. I'm off to DR, baby, to learn more about my people. I feel like that, that's a great thing. And being connected with your culture, you might feel that you're connecting with a missing part that you didn't have before. And you may realize some things about yourself that you didn't know. Honestly, bro, exactly. Because, yeah, man, it's, it's deep, bro. It's something that's hard to explain. When they say having kids is, it's going to change you. It's going to bring you all this joy. But you don't understand until it actually happens. How many kids you got? I have three. You have three? Three? Yep. I got two boys, or one girl. 15-year-old, nine-year-old. And the scene would be two-year-old. Yep. Jeremiah just turned two. Yo. My daughter is... She is bossy. Dude, she, same with my son. And, and they just, at that age, they just want to be so independent. They don't want to help pulling down the stairs. And I'm over here cringing. You're going to fall down those stairs. I mean, help you please. They don't want to help with anything. Dude, I know exactly what you're talking about. That's exactly how Jeremiah is. This is crazy. I'm like, he yelled at me because I tried to help him in the tub. He said, no, I do it. Yeah, that's exactly what she's talking about. It's crazy. Like, how, at two years old, how do you become or get that urge of being coming so independent? That's just crazy to me. Like, I feel like all kids must have been a little longer than what we really <laughs> Like, babies are born like nine months in, but I think our kids were like in there for a it's year. These COVID babies. It bro. was like the hyperbolic time babies. chamber, like on Dragon Ball Z, and they just freaking eat. I can't believe it. So, these COVID babies is different. Pandemic baby. Yes. Yeah, that's why we do have pandemic babies. <laughs> yeah, bro. They the same, almost the same age. Yeah, Wait, she just they... turned two, right? No. On the 20. Oh, okay, yeah. Jeremiah turned to July 28th, wow. July 18th. Dang. That's crazy, man. And, and then check this out, right? I'm going to see my dad. My dad's in Dominican Republic. And it's like hard for him because he wants to be with like me and his grandkids, but he can't because he got the court it. Mm. But my son was literally born on his birthday. No way. Yeah, bro. That's the best gift, right? Yeah. Damn. That, the odds are that, bro. It's like you should have put the ladder. But even this, right? Like, I want to look into the statistics of how many kids are actually born on the due date. No. Because my son was born on the due date. No. Yeah. That's hated. Because even like when I was telling my dad when he's due, he's like, oh my God, that's my birthday. You never think he's, they're going to come all the do. He was listening. <laughs> <laughs> Jamal was like, all right, so I need to come out on July. What was it? July 18th. Say less. Set the timer. I'm coming up. Here. <laughs> it's ready. Let's go. Wow. He's special then. Very special. Oh, yeah, man. I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. I cool. definitely appreciate it. But you understand too because it's just it's something about these kids bro mm -hmm. and i feel like it's a lot has to do with it is the content that they watch too oh man wait is you, did your son watch miss rachel too miss rachel blippy oh man jason jason wait that's a, oh man you got all jeremiah said, i want to watch jason i want to watch jason he's another like, he's one of these little kid influencers bro does he open up those little gifts and stuff and I think he unwraps the toy? The no, Jason, he does like a lot with his parents. Okay. Like little skits, like they be playing like sports and games. Oh. Places. God, he got you. Oh, that's dope. Uh, These kids are making money on social you media. Feel me, though? You Yo, feel me? they're making crazy. Oh, there I go. Super. Spinning them around real quick. Got to get this hair. Like, got to make sure this hair yeah, line this, is right. Yeah, this fade is nasty. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited to see, like, some of this content when it's repurposed. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. We going. Does the, the fade look blow? Because you're not wearing these glasses? Or... 
when you put your glasses on, you're not going to see any lines, I promise. Let's take a look, fellas. Oh, man. See that shot right there? I'm going to have to do a little more blending, though. I'm going to have to do a little more blending oh, on that man. side. But this side looks good. Oh, that, oh yeah, that, that looks good right there. Bro, this joint is... Yeesh. Yo, man. man. Okay, okay, okay. He really is who they say he is. I'm big. I'm big, brother. Oh, man. But yeah, it is like one. There's a couple reasons like why I like doing the podcast. One of them is because of content is king, and why would you ever want to run out of it? Exactly. So I really believe that every business owner should have bulk content to pull from mm -hmm. for specific things, right? Like we talked about a different number of topics today, and there might be a, a event coming up or a promotion coming up where we can pull this in and use it to drive traffic to, you know what I'm saying? Oh, for sure, for sure. One of the other reasons for me is to give value, a value exchange. So I really want to be able to tell your story of the Blueprint Barber Lounge. And that's, I'm a digital storyteller, you know what I'm saying? And you really are who they say you are, man. Thank you. The you're best in Philly, I'm, bro. Oh, you are. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. These are some powerful words there. You know what? I'm not going to deny the, I'm not going to discard the title you gave me. I'm going to manifest that. I'm going to keep that. I'm nah, bro, that. like this joint is sharp, though. I don't know <laughs> if he, I know. My haircut don't usually look like this, though. <laughs> hey. I've been doing it for a long time. It's like you're, I don't know if you did that intentionally, but you made my waves pop. Like, <laughs> hey, listen, man. It's all about the mind. I forgot I had waves. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah. Got the tsunami. Oh, man. <laughs> Got the stuff. Woman, glad you need a haircut. That's far. Man, I think what it is. I flow a lot better with good conversation and it takes the pressure off me because I know I was going to be on camera to go Ted and Gore and I could get a little nerve wracking. I'm confident in my skill. Being in front of the camera, man, it could be nerve wracking sometimes, but. And, and that's the oh. other thing, right? I love doing this for another reason and that's because people will allow that right there, what you just said, to limit them. Right. And those limiting beliefs, what they do is they hold you back from your full potential and they hold you back from being the content that you want to see. Yeah, that's true. But if you're with a content specialist, mm -hmm. someone like myself, yep. right, it's an experience. You're giving me an experience and I'm giving it right back at you. Well, that's right. Yeah. I feel like people stunt their own growth without even knowing it. And sometimes that confidence has to be extracted from an outside source uh -huh. because sometimes people just don't know how to do it. They don't know how to get to their, their self to that point where they can feel confident in what they're doing. It's either that or just repetition until you feel like you're doing it right. My God. Yeah, man. I've been over at Jack well, I'll be honest with you it was just not too long ago that I was like super confident in my haircuts where I could do this with my eyes closed and it, it takes a long time some sooner than others some can get it like right away it may take a year for one person it may take a decade for another but the key to get to that point a lot of sweat e equity was invested into getting to the point where I'm at today. Is that? No, I feel you, bro. I feel you. And I feel like no matter what, there's no getting around it. That's the only way to get better and to get greater. Oh, for sure. For sure. The fact. If anybody wants to start a podcast, like, you're not going to start a podcast and get a million views right away. No. <laughs> You're not even probably going to get four. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? True. Because then you got to go through the process of learning about SEO, learning about the title, description, thumbnails, learning mm -hmm. 
about calls for action, learning about your target audience and their pain points, learning about content repurposing, learning about live streaming and plethora of things. Jesus. It's never ending. And then when you think that you got it all figured out, then the algorithm was, changes up. Yo, it would change up on you. And then you got to take a whole new direction with... A whole new approach. Yep. Boy, it looks sharp. It's continuing education on, on this type of stuff. There's no way you can continue doing the same thing forever and get the same result. Well, listen, is I'm a realtor. I work for one of the fastest growing real estate companies in the nation and number one in the region. Hey. So shout out to the Surefire Group. Shout out. So within like my role as the media director, a lot of what I do is working with agents, helping them build their social media, helping them create content to attract the right client. What would what advice would you give a realtor that's looking to let's just say any entrepreneur that's looking to build their brand on social media, other than all the things we've already talked about, what is some advice that you would give? Tips and tricks. Go ahead. This is what somebody told me a lot about when I saw a difference in my growth in social media. Is make sure that whatever content you're creating and you're in it, be yourself. Don't try to be anybody else because if people are watching your content, they're there to watch you. So don't change your voice. Don't try to be extra proper. Don't try to be too scripted or robotic. It's okay. People are there to see you. Just be yourself. And those that are interested in seeing you, they'll continue watching you because you're being you. Uh, that's a piece of advice that was given to me. Because in the past, they're like, Izzy, when I come into the shop and get haircuts from you, you do not sound like anything that you sound like on your social media. Just be yourself, bro. Dang, and, bro. Yeah. Dang. Oh, yeah. So I, I was That's trying a to be a tough pill to swallow, huh? I was trying to be a people pleaser. I, I was trying to re I was trying to Dang. copy what was out there, but what was out there wasn't me. And I didn't know that people wanted to see me. And once I started being myself, the traction, I started to develop some traction and I saw my social media take off. Dang, yeah, that's bro. my advice. Be yourself. Dang, bro, like that. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, man. Honestly, that just helped me, bro. Authenticity wins every time. For sure. And being vulnerable and transparent breaks down walls. And helps people to come in and know you a little better. Yeah. Especially in business and entrepreneurship, especially for my real estate agents, you got to become someone that people like, know, and trust. Yep. Because visibility plus credibility equals profitability. But while you're being visible, if you're not authentic, they may not think you're credible. Ew. And that's basically what you're saying. Yeah. They were basically saying, Bro, that's not you. <clears throat> that's a Bobo version of you. Yeah. That's the Diet Coke. My God. That's the Diet Coke of Izzy. That's not the real Coca-Cola. That's the Diet Coke. That's 1%. That's one calorie, not enough Izzy. There ain't no calories in that Izzy. I got plenty of calories. <laughs> but, you know what I'm saying? We don't want the sugar-free version. We want the hundo version. We want the 100% version. We don't want to be played for a fool watching something that is not real. Yeah, that's why they have reality TV and people binge on that because they think that what they're watching is real. It's all scripted. Yeah, and, and it's all scripted. Attention sells, man. Drama sells. Drama sells, man. Be yourself, God. That's all I could really say, to be honest. That's for help me. And make sure that you're Putting something out there worth listening to. Something that someone can learn from. Not just some BS. Oh, I'm sitting in traffic listening to my music, bobbing my head. Nobody cares that you're in your car driving yeah, listening to your music. Bro. Like, add value. value to your content. Add value. Yep. Oh, that's what I said. 
Man, listen, we networking, y'all, live in effect while I'm getting my cut, getting ready for DR. Listen. Your network is your net worth, baby. Season three, it is out now. Get with it or get left. This is not the last time you're going to see Izzy because Izzy believes in networking as well. That's right. Let me get your networking tip. Networking tip. Oh, man. So, obviously, when you network, you have to make sure that you're someone of value within the networking group or show your value in front of whoever you're in front of. Stay connected. Stay informative. Don't ever over deliver. Just be real to what it is that you're offering. That way you're not letting anyone down when you finally give them the service or the product that you're bringing to the table. Don't try to be one thing in front of them, but when, you, when they finally get to use your services, they see that it's something totally different. That's a really good. Because when you network, basically it's a referral-based type of program. You're going there to give yourself exposure to these people so that they can go ahead and share the information about you. So they're trusting that whatever service you're offering, they're going to shout that out to their friends if they only use this barber, only use this marketing guy, only use this realtor. And they're trusting that the service that you are offering in the networking group, that's a service that is going to be delivered to their loved ones or their close friends or whoever they're you don't want to make them look like they come ass. Like, you Straight want, up. You want them to be like, yeah, that's my barber. I referred him to you because I know he's the best in the city. He's not going to let you down. Even if you don't know what kind of haircut you want, he'll find a blueprint for you. Or, hey, listen, you need content. You need marketing advice. I know Justin. He's going to hook you up. He's going to take care of you. And he's going to create something amazing for you. And He's going to keep on until he gets it right for you so that whatever your vision is, is implemented onto that screen. And they can have that confidence in spreading the word about your business. When you go into a networking group, make sure that you are authentic and you are delivering a message that reflects your service. That's what I can say. Oh, man. This is... And even what we're doing right now, bro, it's like we're optimizing time. We're optimizing each other's time. For sure. Because, and I know I, I'm taking a little bit longer than expected, but the good thing is, right, I needed a haircut. <laughs> and you needed content, right? Let's go. We, You believe in content, right? Who doesn't need content? Bro, listen, there's a lot of people out there that do this, but I didn't just go with just anybody. I was like, I know Justin got this. I appreciate you, bro. And even just letting me do my thing. And this is a really organic and it's real. You know what I'm saying? I'm literally getting my haircut right now. Can't That's make that up. And it's the best haircut I ever got. <laughs> the best conversation usually happening in a barbershop, they said. Shock talk. Yeah. I'm glad you like your haircut so far, man. That's what's up, man. I guess I'll be seeing more of you, huh? <laughs> man, listen, we out here networking, baby. Let's go. Yeah, man. It's... I got to make sure I take care of you, too, man, because you be at the real producers. So when you go out there and they see this product, they're going to know that. Walking over with all my clients. It's funny. A lot of people think they're entrepreneurs, right? You and me and my wife are talking about this, too. And everybody... I want to be an entrepreneur. Some people claim to be an entrepreneur. But do you know that an entrepreneur is someone that can walk away from their business and it's still running? Hello. And they're still making money while they're not there. <laughs> Man. Ain't that crazy? That's, yeah, that's actually building a real company. Yeah. It's, I can't call myself an entrepreneur yet because I have to be able to create something that is making money while I'm away when I step away from it. Yeah, man. No, I feel you right. There was this summer, like, I got really sick. I don't know if it was COVID, what it was. I was down for, like, almost two weeks. Mm. And that, it showed me a lot, bro. It showed me that I'm on the right path. And if I keep doubling down in this area, that 
I'll be a great entrepreneur one day. And that's, uh, I, yeah, I was really sick and I was down, but the operations of my business kept flowing because what I've done is shout out to the Wolf of Broad Street. Mm. He's helped me with so much, coached me through so much, mentored me through so much, but I've had a, I've had a couple of virtual assistants now for this one specifically for six months. I have another one. She's on call. And then I'm giving this other team a try because like when you're subcontracting work, you should subcontract that to team. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Especially if you're a creative. But anyway, saying all that to say, I'm really proud of the work that I put in with my VA and how I'm able to assign her projects and she's able to keep it flowing so that way I can be in places like this. Yeah, that's a milestone. And that the things keep flowing the content keeps getting repurposed mm -hmm. um the texts are going out the emails are going out etc yeah i definitely i aspire bro to to build something beautiful you know what i'm saying bro i remember watching the content in the infancy stage of your career and to this point now like you literally went from eating baby food and now you're eating like tomahawk steaks in your business. I'm like, damn, Appreciate like this that, dude man. is killing it. That's the best analogy I can get. And watching your growth throughout these years. Oh man, just, I would say, keep going. Keep standing in front of their faces. And we're going to do great things. Listen, man, I know I value your time and, and we're getting to that hour mark. Honestly, bro. It was really nice networking with you. I appreciate the cut. This isn't the last time, though, ladies and gentlemen. I got you. So tell the audience, man, leave them. If you could leave them with one thing is leave them with one thing, and that's the end of the show for today. Wow. You really stumped me there. <laughs> Something like inspiring, motivating, encouraging, for them to be all they can be. I would say that don't ever give up on yourself and our life is about going through seasons and you just gotta be able to weather the storm when they come whether it's snow sleet hail hurricane you just got to be able to get through these seasons and all those storms that life brings you and stay consistent in your work and wait for that bamboo season because Bamboo Ooh. is coming, oh, baby. Oh, man. Bamboo, they, it starts its growth underwater. When you feel like you're drowning and you're under that water, and then all of a sudden it's time for you to sprout and you shoot out that water, it shoots up like a couple feet. It's not like an inch above the water. So the growth after all those storms that you're going through, the blessing is going to be like crazy. So... I would say just weather the storm because the best is yet to come. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, bamboo season is coming. Bamboo season's coming, baby. We thank you for hanging out with us, for networking with us, man. Your network is your net worth. That's right. Every day is content day. Every day is an opportunity to be the content that you want to see. That's right. If you see that message isn't on social media like you can give it, then go out there and give it. For sure. Because you're responsible to promote your business. You're responsible to create content for your business. And if you get stumped, that's why you got people like me and Iz, all sure. right, marketers that can help you out and get you right. But no, nah, ladies and gentlemen, be the content you want to see and don't let fear hold you back. Listen, man, your network is your net worth. We out of here. Boom. Like that.